today. Please remain safe if you haven't done so yet. We encourage you to get your COVID vaccination. And now, will you join in with me with a brief devotion with scripture reading and prayer, followed by our opening song or duet from the Park Avenue Baptist Church Trio. I woke up this morning with the word joy reverberating in, in, my, in my thoughts. So I shall be reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. And I shall be reading from the New American Standard Version of God's Word. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an expressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. I have read verses 8 and 9 of 1 Peter chapter 1. Now let us approach the throne of grace, mercy, and truth. Heavenly Father, once more and again, you saw fit to allow us to see the dawning of a new day. And as we wipe away sleepiness from our eyes and realize that we have been granted another day of grace, we are filled with thanksgiving and praise unto thee, O Lord, for your love and kindness and tender mercy. Though you know our beginning and our end, we live life moment by moment, second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, and day by day. So with that being said, Father God, we present ourselves as followers of Jesus Christ as living sacrifices that you may use us for the purpose for which thou hast created us. We realize, O oh Lord, as we've lived many of years, it, it comes readily apparent that this place is not our home and we're just passing through this barren land. So through the aid and guidance of the Holy Spirit and our surrendering unto him, we pray, O oh dear Lord, that we are moving toward and, and fulfilling the purpose for which thou created us. So have thine own way, Lord, as the songwriter says, have thine own way, for thou art the potter and we are the clay. And we ask this now in the precious and glorious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is seated there at your right hand. Amen and amen. Oh, 
today. I ask the Lord to make me whole. Make me whole. The Lord, He holds me. And the Lord, He keeps me whole. Oh, joy, joy in my soul. When I get weak right. and can't go home, yeah. I feel all my hope, all my joy. to my kind oh, oh, joy, joy in my soul. What is a morning? Hey, hey, it won't be very long. You're gonna look for me and I'll be gone home. Going home. Going up to glory where I sing and shout. Oh, oh joy, joy, joy in my soul. Joy, joy. joy. Joy, 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 down in my soul, sweet, beautiful, so saving joy, oh, joy, joy in my soul, oh, joy, joy in my soul, oh, joy, joy in my soul. These are your announcements for this morning. We, reg we regretfully announce the passing of Sister Virginia Todd's daughter, Halima. Further information as far as our homegoing services will be brought to you later. Our church infrastructure program is underway. Resumption of in-person worship when our infrastructure project is complete and we will keep you upgraded, updated with timely uh, progress reports. For members considering pledging to support our infrastructure project, we have completed work on the pledge estimates. The document can be made available to you via email or through the mail. Please make sure that our church secretary has your email or physical address. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Also, I have an uh, uh, announcement from, uh, announcement of thank you from the Hester family, Sister Bybee and Sharon. The Hester family would like to thank the Park Avenue Baptist Church family for your prayers, cards, texts, phone calls in support of the loss of their dear son. Words cannot express our gratitude to you in sharing our sadness. Brother Bobby and Sister Sharon Hester, thank you for being so thoughtful. We will continue to have our prayer calls on Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Prayer leader on Monday is Deacon John DeBose, and on Fridays, Brother Major Carter. And for those of you who would like to join in on the prayer call, I will gladly give you the number once again. The number is 605-475-4444. Zero, with a pin code of 849-592. These are your announcements. I have one other announcement that will be given to you by Sister Jamie Johnson. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This announcement is for the Vacation Bible School. 
Um, please write these dates down. June 21st through June 25th, we are going to be having our Vacation Bible School, which is right around the corner. This is a chance for you to get your fellowship going with your fellow members of the church right from the comfort of your own home. We ask that you please visit the Park Avenue Baptist Church Christian Education page on your Facebook, or you can contact Sister Lolita Bernard to register so, you can, so we can prepare the packets for you to be able to take home so that you can participate in the activities that we have for Vacation Bible School. Her number is 951-452-3111. Again, that is 951-452-3111. Three one one one. This is important that you register early because we want to prepare your packets so that you guys can participate and have a good time. This is our first opportunity to do it virtually, and we want to we want to do our best to make it successful. So please join in. We are preparing a excellent um, curriculum for you, and it's something that's going to touch each and every one of your hearts. So we look forward to having you uh, register and participate. And again, that's June 21st through June 25th in the comfort of your own home. God bless. Amen. To God be the glory. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ here at the Park Avenue Baptist Church. We believe that our God honors and answers prayer. It's prayer time now, so wherever you are in cyberspace, we invite you to join together with us as we look to the Lord for answer, comfort, consolation, blessing, and grace this morning. We're recognizing that those a few names have been read in relationship to specific prayer. We have bereaved families. Death does not take a day off. It's strange, mysterious, but it's part of the fabric of what we call humanity. But God is able to comfort us by the power of his Holy Spirit. So we're trusting him today. And if you, by chance, have name or number or text or email, to folks that are going through bereaved states, please reach out to them. We are family here at Park Avenue Missionary Baptist Church, and we love one another, and that's one way to express that love. We're praying for our country, praying for our world. We're praying for our armed servicemen. We're praying for Park Avenue in particular, and especially our pastor. We're lifting him up. And we're praying for all those that have been impacted by the things that have occurred in the last year. So with heads bowed, eyes closed, let's look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, for grace and mercy bestowed upon us, we thank you. We thank you for your love, kindness. <clears throat> we'll acknowledge right now, before we go to petitioning you, that we have missed the mark. We have not measured up. We sinned against you by commission and omission. Things we were supposed to do, you already instructed us, and we failed to do it because we thought time constraints or our weak and feeble ability kept us from doing that, which is pleasing your sight. We ask your forgiveness, Lord. Encourage and strengthen us. Make us better. And then calculating things, Lord. We, we chose to do things that were contrary because of our weak, frail flesh and because we're not trying to cling as close as we could to you. We ask your forgiveness right now, Lord, in your son Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for this vehicle by which we can communicate with you through prayer. We know that you're sovereign. We know that you're providential. We know that you have a will that will be made manifest in the life of what we call humanity. But at the same time, you said we could come to you and with supplication and yielded spirit talk to you. So today, Lord, we lift up the world situations and circumstances, our governments and governments local, and touch the leaders. Uh, it doesn't matter about Republican, Democrat, or whatever a person might be, but by the content of their heart and character, have them to see your plan for what should be, has to be, and will be, so that 
Folk that are in those leadership positions can govern properly and righteously with a sensitivity towards love, motivated by love and compassion. We're asking you, Lord, touch hearts, touch, touch, touch. Our servicemen all over the world, keep them safe and strong. Lord, I pray for my son in particular, he and his family in Japan. Keep him, your hedge about him thus far, we thank you for it. and continue. We ask in your son's name that you continue to keep him. Our Park Avenue Baptist Church family, each and every member, some have not contacted or connected, but they are in tune to us, but we want to lift them up, whatever they may be going through, and especially, Lord, in these uh, ending pandemic days we call help people with their mindsets and their psychology and their mentality because depression, hopelessness, and frustration can even impact the Christian. So help us, Lord, touch our minds. We lift up our pastor, Lord. He has done, is doing, and will continue to do a great work for you. From the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, health and strength, we ask. We ask for wisdom and knowledge that as you allow him into the deep treasures of your word, we are made the better. We're built up because of his commitment to your word, your will, and your way so that we can grow and continue to do ministry. Bless, Lord, and strengthen our pastor, Dr. Campbell. The man that's going to come and break the bread of life today, enhance his spirit and mind, draw from the treasures of his searching and his study and your anointing upon him to impart to us the words that will bring inspiration, hope, compassion, and love being manifest. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for all that's transpired thus far. Continue to guide this worship experience. And Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on Calvary's cross that we might have eternal life. Allow us by the power of your spirit to glorify you properly, make manifest your son, and to edify and build up those that are part of the household of faith. And then also to evangelize those that do not know you. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, Lord, for your love, kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
At this time, we are blessed to have an opportunity to share our gifts monetarily, financing the ministry of the church, which is continuing and which is thriving and which has never stopped. Ministry from the Park Avenue Missionary Baptist Church of Riverside is thriving and growing. We're reaching out to folks. We're utilizing the monetary gifts to bless people, bless the church, bless the outreach, and bless our pastor. And all of the endeavors that this church has in relationship to what God has ordained us to do, we're thriving in. So you continue to share your gifts monetarily. By tithes and offering, we are taught, and by offering, meaning that above and beyond your tithes. And don't forget, we do have a drive going on in relationship to the upkeep and to enhance our audio and technological ministry. So join in, be a part of it. You sure can't beat God giving, so you might as well join us and continue. Those that are not part officially of the Park Avenue Missionary Baptist Church, we invite you to give also that are listening to us in cyberspace. Online you can give, come by the church, drop it off by mail, are the avenues by which you can give. Scripture teaches us that, but this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man, according as he has purposed in his heart, let him give. Not grudgingly a necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And finally, remember the words of the Lord and how he has said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us look to the Lord for the sanctification of the gifts that we are about to receive and are going to receive in the next few days. Heavenly Father, for grace and mercy bestowed upon us, we thank you for your love kindness shown in our daily lives. You have given us opportunity for jobs, opportunities to bring in monetary resources to bless and anoint the church's ministries. Continue, Lord, to strengthen our hearts to give in such a way that love exudes from every opportunity that we give monetarily. Now, those that are struggling, Lord, we ask that you bless them with resource, with job, with opportunity. And then remind them, Lord, by the power of your spirit that when they have an opportunity to seize it. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit of giving in relationship to doing it according to the word of God. And we thank you, Lord, for the gifts given and the tithe shared and the offering shared. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, the Park Avenue family and friends. We greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, the bishop of our souls. We are very pleased this morning to present one of our own, the Reverend J.C. Allen, who will bring the message today. We asked him to come to preach because he and Sister Allen will be moving to the Las Vegas area in the next few days. So we have Brother Allen come to bring a message. After we have singing from our singers, the next voice you will hear will be the Reverend J.C. Allen. Say amen. Amen.
this day, opening my eyes this morning and allowing me to be here. That's a blessing beyond told. I want to first say to Park Avenue, this church family, my family, my wife and I who's here to, to say thank you so very much because when we came here we found so much love and acceptance. We were able to come to a church where there was no negativity, no real feeling, just acceptance and love. And we want to say thank you to that. Since we are moving on and leaving the state, we, we, we just couldn't do so without thanking this family. And then we want to say a special thank you to Pastor Campbell. Out of all the pastors I've known in my lifetime, this, the pastor that more reflects Christ in our relationships I've met through Pastor Campbell. Amen. I regret that I hadn't known him many years before. I realized what I missed in my development by not knowing him. My wife and I want to say thank you, Pastor Campbell. Thank you for your acceptance and your leadership and your pastoring, your teaching, that it really gave us 
It's just, just brighten up our spirit. We want to thank you so much. Let us pray. My loving Father, I thank you for my life and for becoming my Savior. Words cannot describe how thankful I am to know that you have made sin for me so that I might become the righteousness of God in you. Father, may I know you as the shepherd of my life and eternal soul. May my fears be resolved by faith in you and through the power of your love. Help me, Father, to love and manifest the spirit of love in all circumstances to all people. I pray that I might be given the grace to live my life in total dependence upon you, to walk in spirit and truth, and to submit my will to you. Do not let sin have dominion over me, Lord. And may my fleshly desires and any ungodly inclinations remain nailed to the cross. Thank you, Father, that my grace through faith in Christ I have been set free. Precious Father, I pray you will keep me walking in spirit and truth, living in holiness and righteousness all my days. May the world be crucified to me, and I to the world through the cross of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If we go through scripture and try to determine which is the most important word we find in scripture, the word that stands out to us, that means something to us uh, out of all the words in scripture and their meanings, I'm sure we will come up with different answers. For me, I go to Genesis 2nd chapter, verse 16, 17. And, 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 and even though the, the, the exact word is not given in this scripture, in these verses, the meaning of the word is given. Let me read it. It said, uh, 16, 17, it said, The Lord God commanded man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may freely eat. But from the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For on the day that you eat from it, you will certainly die. Now, we do not see the word here, but I hear loud and clear the word that I'm looking for. And that word is obedience. God wasn't asking Adam for his opinion. He wasn't making a suggestion to Adam. He wasn't simply having a conversation. He was telling Adam what he wanted, what he required, what he could and could not do. All Adam had to do was to obey. <laughs> now, God knew that man was not going to obey. He knew this beforehand. So he had already thought of the second most important word in Scripture. And that word is grace. Since we have already messed up on the most important word in Scripture, obedience, let us talk about the second most important word in scripture before we mess it up too. Today we're going to talk a little bit about God's grace. The grace of God is expressed by God's forgiveness of our sins. Unmerited divine assistance given to humans for their regeneration and sanctification. A state of sanctification enjoyed through divine assistance. The word grace in the New Testament comes from the Greek word cherish, which means favor, blessing, kindness. We can all extend grace to others, but when the word grace is used in connection with God, it takes on a more powerful meaning. One of the best known definition of grace is only three words, God's unmerited favor, amen? God grace, grace is God's choosing to bless us rather than curse us as our sins deserve. Our scripture this morning, since we're talking about grace, comes from Ephesians 1st chapter, verse 7. Then Ephesians 2nd chapter, verse 5, and 5 through 10. Give you a minute. 
those who wants to look that up, but I'm going to just read them here. I got amen. amen. Ephesians 1, verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, yes. the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Ephesians 2, chapter, verse 5 through 10. Even when we were dead in our wrongdoing, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in, G in Christ Jesus. So that in the ages to come, he might show the boundless riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourself, it is the gift of God not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Amen? You may be seated. Now, Scripture talks about grace. If you want to understand the importance of the word grace, Scripture talks about grace more than 100 times throughout Scripture. You're going to read about grace the importance of grace and, and what that means to us and, and, and how if, if God hadn't come with grace, how we would still be totally lost and wilding in darkness of sin. But his grace is that pulled us out of that and that grace comes from his love. From his love. We could have said love was the most important word. <laughs> However you want to approach it. But, but his grace decided to pull us out of the darkness that he knew we were going to get ourselves in before we got in it. Just like your parents know you're about to do something before you do it, and you go do it anyway, and want to try to figure, how did they figure it out? How did they know? They know his child. You know your children. God knows his. Scripture in Ephesians 4, 7, it says, But to each one of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. In John 1, chapter, it said, The word become flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. 2 Corinthians uh, 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 chapter 12, verse 9a, said, But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And then in Hebrews 4, chapter, he said, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Grace. God's grace is a saving grace. In Romans 3rd chapter, it says, we read the, uh, that the unearned favor of the Lord is necessary because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. The only way to receive God's saving grace is through faith in Christ. Saving grace results in our sanctification, the process by which God conforms us to the image of Christ. At the moment of salvation, by grace through faith, God makes us new creatures. We're starting over again. We're leaving the old and going into the new. They're like being born again. We have no saving grace on our own. We have no saving grace on our own. Man tends to think that he can do everything. And anything that can't be done, it's impossible to be done because man just don't think no one can do anything he can't do. But man, once you accept Jesus Christ, must understand that we have no saving grace on our own. There was nothing that we have done, nothing that we can do that will call God to save us. We are completely lost. Nowhere to turn. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to holler for help. God's grace. Jesus Christ gave us the answer in Luke 18 he, when he says, what is impossible with men is possible with God. 
and, and, this, and this was to answer the question, how can we be saved? For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God. By his saving grace, God has paid the ransom for everyone who will receive his gift of salvation. God's grace is a sanctifying grace. And that the word grace represents God's unmerited love and favor toward us. The word sanctify as it pertains to the life of Christians, means to set a person apart for holiness. We put together, uh, put these words together, and what we have is sanctifying grace. Christians enter sanctification, or a state of holiness, at the moment uh, they are born of the Spirit of God. The righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ, to all who believe. When you become born again, when you become that new creature, creation, and you just change everything, you have the same physical appearance and the same physical body, but that inside spiritualness in you is changed totally. Everything changed, and that, that, that change caused you to determine what you do with this physical body and how you live this physical life. What's changed inside of you when you become a new creature, a new creation, a new born again person in the name of Jesus Christ. Romans 3rd chapter, verse 22 24. But in the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe. And I keep saying that before, who believe? Yeah. It's, it's just not a blank check. Who believe? Yeah. You must believe. Yeah. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Nice. By justifying as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that from the start of the Christian life, we are set apart by God's holy purpose, for, God, for God's holy purpose. God performed this work of sanctification once for all time. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself, it is the gift of God. There is power in God's grace. Immediately after we are saved, it goes to work to sanctify us, to separate us, to pull us apart. We accept that Christ now it's time to step away from where we came from. Because now we got a new life, a new beginning, a new start. We play a part in our own sanctification process through obedience. It takes us back to obedience. Now we get a second chance at obedience. Through Adam, we goofed up the first chance of obedience. And then let's face it, most of us continue to goof it up on our own. But now when we're born again, and God's grace is there waiting for us, we get a second chance at obedience. But ultimately, we have to count on his sanctifying grace. His sanctifying grace. God's grace is a sustaining grace. Yeah. Endure. That's the saying that, that endures, that keeps you going on. Yeah. That gives you the power and the strength and the willpower and the desire to go on. Yeah. No matter what we face, no matter what we're looking at, no matter what we're going through, no matter what things happen, we want to go on. And we, can't, we, we do that because of God and, and his grace, the sustaining grace. In time of trial and suffering, Jesus says, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. The Bible says, let us therefore draw near with confidence to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and may find grace to help in time of need. Have you ever needed to endure? I believe we all have. At some time in our life, 
at some point in our life, at some situation in our life where we seem to be knocked to our knees and knocked flat on the floor from what might have happened and we're not sure we can make it through and, and how we can endure. We just don't know what to do here. We, we got to rely on God's sustaining grace. Yeah, I can remember personal situations where my children was in, in, in dire strait and it knocked me to my knees. And I, it, it's like, what am I going to do now? God's grace. God's grace will get me back up. We all know what it feels like to have life disappoint us and not work out as we hoped. We all know what it's like to long for something different, something better, something more. You know, as humans being, we never stop wanting more. As, as, as that human animal, we, 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 we always want more. You know, we got one thing in this hand, we're looking over on the other side. You know, we saw something look a little bit better. <coughs> Let me see. And we want to try that. Uh, without God's grace in our life, we never learn to be satisfied. See? But when you become satisfied with Christ, and your relationship as God's child, yes. that spiritual satisfaction that you have within you that, that, that calms you and brings you a joy yes. that you would not experience anywhere else, yes. that's what keeps you going. So as a human, when you see something else, oh, I wouldn't mind having that, it doesn't bother you. You just keep on going. Because you have a satisfaction and a contentment in Christ. We need to endure. We are lost and cannot find our way. The times when we feel like giving up, we need to endure. Sustain. Times when we're suffering from pain and illness, we must endure. What gets you through it? Christ. What gets me through it? I personally can, can talk about that. Because when I was then my back, on my back, in that bed and thought I wasn't going to see the next day. I perfectly remember smiling, talking to Jesus. And I wasn't as safe as I am now. Okay, I had one foot in the dark and one foot in the light. But I called on him, and because of that, I was calm. There was a joy that came over me, and I knew where I should be. A song that I, I like says, sometimes I feel like I've never been nothing but tired. And I'll be walking till the day I expire. Sometimes I lay down, no more can I do. But then I go on again. Because God asked me to. Amen. <laughs> the good news is that God's sustaining grace gives hopes to the hopeless. Directions to the lost and strength to the weak. Your current circumstances will not get the final say in your life. God will do that. Now in verse 9, Ephesians 2, it says, Not a result of work so that no one may boast. We have to be so careful. Because even with God's blessings and things get better and we begin to live better and things are going good for us, we have a tendency to think we've done something on our own. We don't, we don't give the credit where all the credit should, should go. You see, we might give the credit to the banker who gave the loan, but don't understand that was God behind that decision. You see, we don't give the credit right. We, we praise the doctor and we want to, to give the doctor all the praise to understand it was God behind that doctor. That doctor hands moving on that surgery, the things that happen, God's behind that, Christ is behind that, and that is what delivers. We lose sight. As human beings, we lose sight of where our blessings come from. I don't like a doctor unless he's a praying doctor. I don't like the doctor think that he has all the power and all the answers, and if he can't do it, it can't be done. Yeah. I asked my doctor, are you praying doctor? Yeah. Send me a praying doctor. Yeah. We can pray together. No matter what happened, I know that God is in the mix. Right. 
I can deal with it. If our acceptance by God and our receiving salvation were based on our achievements in life, or the good works in our life, then we could boast about what we have. We could say, I did this. I accomplished this. I worked hard to get where I am. No one did it for me. <clears throat> I did it all myself. Now when God bless you, <clears throat> excuse me, with his grace, you would consider it as payback for all the work you've done. You figure God's blessing you because you did all this work. You've been doing these good things. You've been feeding the poor, helping the homeless, helping the sick. Oh, you've been out there just doing all these things to help people because you, you read where God said we're supposed to help people. Love one another. So you got busy. And now when you, you bless, you say, well, yeah, I, I'm blessed because I did this. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, 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 you would think that you have earned your way into heaven. And you could look down at those who didn't make it. Those others fail because they like your work ethics. Yeah. Or were just too lazy. You would stick your chest out and boast about your accomplishments. If the plan and process of salvation was based on human works, receiving salvation will be because of our own doing, our works, and, I, 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 and not God's grace. Amen? God's grace would not be a gift because through our works we paid for it. Hmm? Ephesians tells us no. You say the plan and process of salvation is from God as a gift. It is by grace and it is it access through faith in God's promise in Christ. Nothing about salvation is worked up from within ourselves. And it is not based on good things we do. Boasting is our own achievement, uh, in our own achievements, is, is out of place. But as Paul says in 2 Corinthians, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. In the Lord. You didn't do it yourself. You need to understand that, that you, you, you weren't blessed because you work. You work because you were blessed. Amen. Some might wonder, what place good works have in life of a Christian? It, it, it may become confusing for some people. Yeah. And we have to really look at it carefully. Well, do, I, do I become saved and I born again and all I do is just sit at home? No, no. I don't have to do nothing else. I don't have to pray. I don't have to, because God's grace is upon me. Then I just sit down. No. We are not saved by doing good works, but we are saved for the purpose of doing good works. But we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God saves us so that we can go into the world doing good works in his name. And this brings him all the glory. Yeah. To fully understand grace, we need to consider who we were without grace. Yeah. Amen? We were born in sin. We were guilty of breaking God's holy laws. We were enemies of God, deserving of death. We were unrighteous. We were without means of justifying ourselves. Spiritually, we were destitute, blind, unclean, and dead. Our souls were in peril and everlasting punishment. Consider who we have become with God's grace. God extended his favor to us. God is what saved us. God is the essence of gospel. God gives us victory over sin. God gives us eternal encouragement. 
with grace. And grace doesn't stop once you're saved. You become saved. Grace just doesn't cut off there. Grace doesn't say, okay, now I, you're saved. I, I, let, we can stop now. God is gracious to us for the rest of our lives. Yes. Working within and upon us. The Bible encourages us with many additional benefits that grace secure in every believer. For example, that grace justifies us before a holy God. Grace provides us access to God to communicate and fellowship with him. Grace wins for us a new relationship of intimacy with God. Grace disciplines and trains us to live in the way that honors God. Grace grants us immeasurable spiritual riches. Grace helps us in our every need. Grace is the reason behind our every deliverance. Grace reserves us in comfort and courage and strengthen us. Grace is the ongoing, benevolent act of God working in us, without which we can do nothing. Grace is greater than our sins. As a recipient of God's grace, Christians are to be gracious to others. Grace gives us to serve others and to exercise our spiritual gifts for the building of the church. Grace don't stop working. It's important for you to keep in mind where you have come from because your past may influence your present life in Christ. We know where we came from. The dark is always right there, but it's never too far behind. We came out of the dark, but it's right there. We're standing in the light, but we can see the dark. And if you're not careful, you will be back in the dark. Uh, you may consider it for a moment, but you're back in there. And so we can't forget where we come from. Remember where you come from. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we used to, uh, when I was a kid, we used to have testimony right. at church <laughs> every Wednesday night, you know, pray me the testimony. And they would even testify about their past and the things that they went through and so forth. And many people would, would testify about their dark life and how they came out to the light and the things they used to do. And, and the grown folks would be testifying, and we were children, and we would hear some of these testimonies, and we'd say, oh my God, Sister So-and-so did that? <laughs> Brother So-and-so used to do that? You know, but, but we can't forget. And what that was, as we got older, we understood that testimony was not for the person who was giving it, but for someone who was hearing it who needed it because they were relating to that situation that they were going through a similar situation and they could hear what happened and how these people were delivered. People will often try to comfort those who realize their shortcoming by saying something like, don't be afraid, God knows your heart. As if that should be a comfort. God knows your heart, yes he does. If God knows our hearts, we are doomed indeed. <laughs> we can give it up. There's no place left to hide. Our only hope is to place our faith in Jesus Christ who lived a perfect life, died on the cross to pay for our sins, and rose again. Our sin is imputed to him, and his righteousness is imputed to us when we trust him. God's grace frees us from the guilt of sin. God's mercy relieves us from the punishment of sin. Grace is not God doing 95% or 99.9% and we making up the difference. Okay. It's not that kind of relationship <clears throat> where God said, okay, I'll, I'll get you, I'll get you 98% there, 99% there, you got to do the rest. No, God does 100% because we are incapable of contributing. A, a, a poem that I wrote, a very short poem, to sort of express some of this. I said, in this life, only sin I live. Sin and darkness, no love to give. From this sin on my own, I cannot be free. Only God's grace can save me. I came to the throne with empty hands. No pay, no gift, helpless I stand. Only the blood that freely flows, the blood of Christ, can save this soul. Amen.
when Jesus was paraded through the streets carrying a cross on his back, he was carrying my grace. When they nailed my Lord to the cross, they put nails in his hands and his feet. They were putting nails into my grace. When they stood him up on that cross for everyone to see, they were looking upon my grace. When they plunged him in his spear in his side, they jammed that spear into my grace. When they laid him in a tomb, they thought it was over. But just three days later, God's grace got up with all power in his hands. Now I wait for the day as I continue to work in his name. I wait for the day and that he calls my name. Not because nothing I've done, but because of what he's done. Not because of my works, but because of his grace. I wait to hear my name. <laughs> and because of God's grace, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for all eternity. Amen. Many of you, some of you, may find yourself in a situation where you're not a member of a church family. A beautiful church family like Park Avenue. You may be in between churches. But I want you to understand the importance it is to be a part of a church family. It, 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 it helps to build and, and helps to maintain your walk with Christ. You, you sh don't try to do it all on your own. Come in with others and join with others in loving and praising the Father. Park Avenue Missionary Baptist Church invites you to consider becoming a member here. If you go online and follow instructions, you may really want to consider. And consider when you become a member of a church, you are not just coming with a bunch of people that, that's, that, that, that's trying to ask you for money or things of this nature. You're coming for your soul and for your sanctification. You become a God's child and you want to be, and scripture tells us to fellowship to fellowship so that you come together with other loving Christians, God-loving Christians to help us get through. So I offer you that this time, while you're watching this or viewing this from home, go to the website. There's a number you can call and talk to anyone. You can call at the prayer times and talk to the, to the deacons at prayer time. Somebody will talk to you. Somebody will talk to you and understand that your relationship with God is the most important relationship you will ever have in your life. Let Park Avenue be a part of that. Amen? Amen.
cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received. say thank you, Park Avenue and Pastor Campbell, on behalf of my wife, Kathy, and I. Okay. Precious Father, we give all the glory to you, all the thanks to you. Thank you for, for your kindness, for your just unchanging love that we know we don't deserve. But yet, you're still there. I thank you for loving me through all the time when I wasn't loving you. But you still was there. Thank you, Father. And I ask you to bless this world because of this pandemic. I understand it's getting better and, and thank God for that and we pray for the day that is totally gone. Thank you, Father. Father, we pray for all those that are, are sick and set in, the, the, those that are ill. We pray that, that while they're going through what they're going through, that they still are wrapped in the joy of your love and that you bring them through. We pray for those who have lost a loved one and pray that they would have the strength to understand that's your decision. And to keep on living in your name. Thank you, Father. Father, we pray for our children. In this day and time, the things that they are exposed to and open to through social media and music and all these things that are, are designed to pull them away from the teaching that we may want to teach them at home. We pray for them. We pray for the parents who have such a struggling hard time trying to continue to guide their children away from the dark side. We pray there, Father. And we pray for the leaders that make decisions that affects all of us. Though they play lip service with Christ, their actions don't represent it, and we have to pray for them, no matter who they are, their Lord. Lord, we pray for the shepherd of this flock, Pastor Campbell. Give him the strength to keep on keeping on, and to hold him close at heart. For we know that he's not working to be saved. He, he, he's saving, that's why he's work. Thank God. And we pray for the Park Avenue family and all those out there listening. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let 
the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen.